Hello again, everyone, and welcome to The Crusher. I'm your host, Josh Brewster, and today uh, I'm with an old friend. She's not old. I'm old, but we are old friends, and uh, she's an actress. Uh, years ago when I was acting, I did a couple comedies with her, and uh, she's a t tremendous talent. And uh, there's so many actors who uh, are they're acting on the surface. This person is uh, to the core uh, acting uh with her, with her characters um, preeminent uh, in her heart and mind. And uh, I've always been absolutely uh, stunned by her talent and also her perseverance. And she's a genuinely good person. And it's my pleasure to welcome Naomi Grossman to the show today. Naomi, how you doing? Thank you, Josh. That was, that really was quite effusive. Well, I, I mean it sincerely. Now, of course, folks, you know Naomi Grossman from uh, American Horror Story, of course, as Pepper, and also as uh, the very frightening Samantha Crow, and uh, she's also an Emmy-nominated uh, actress for uh, Control Alt Delete, and she's done a million other things. And the credits just keep piling up, and I can't keep up with them. But uh, I, I know I, I know Naomi from our days acting in Chicago and. Uh, it's great to have you here. So, Naomi, why don't we do this before we get into what's going to be uh, your show, American Horror Story, that's going to be done in New York and in Taos, New Mexico and elsewhere. Before we get into that, tell me what are the latest things you're working on? Well, you know, I'm out of practice uh, talking about myself here because uh, we've been on strike for yes. four months. So yeah. uh, it's been the longest time that I haven't been able to talk about what I'm doing. But um, uh, I mean, obviously with the show right around the corner, that's really where most of my focus is. Uh, just, just this morning, I got news that I've been, or rather the show has been nominated for a Broadway World uh, nomination for Best Solo Production. So that's very exciting. Um, uh, but as far as film and TV, I actually do have a, a, a bit part, but you know, there's no small parts, only small actors, uh, in a new show called Obliterated, which is uh, produced by the same guys as Cobra Kai. Uh, so yep. it's, it's, a, it's a crazy, madcap uh, 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 action comedy. Uh, it drops on Netflix on November 30th. Wonderful. All right. Yes. Uh, of course, congratulations that the strike is over. I hope the actors got a little better piece than what they've been getting. I would imagine, I mean, I didn't mean to get into this, but I would imagine you, you probably had to strike. I'm not, you know, not every strike is, is necessary, but I have a suspicion that with all this streaming, this is probably a pretty good reason behind uh, having to strike, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely not an expert on it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything has changed. <laughs> you know, the way we watch TV has changed, so the way we yeah. get paid needs to be changed too. You know, <clears throat> yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, those contracts were fine back when. You know, we could make our living from residuals. Like, yeah, I mean, barely, but uh, you know, you would. But now the fact is. It's not like we're, oh boy, my, my episode is of, uh, you know, Father Dolly Mysteries is back. Like, they'll show you yeah. just how old I actually am, but thank you for that. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, nowadays there's no, oh, my episode is back. People are just watching episodes, you know, upon yeah. episodes, upon episodes. And so you're not getting any residuals anymore. And so, um, you know, you better hope for a good day rate. Um, but even then that's once, <laughs> yeah. you no, know, I got you, nobody got can, you. you know, feed their family going to work once <laughs> <laughs> for sure. You know, even so, if it is a payday. <laughs> so, so let's, uh, let's talk about your one woman show. Now, of course, everybody knows you primarily from American horror story and, you know, uh, we'll get into pepper. I guess in a bit, but your one woman show, which I had the pleasure of seeing is called American horror story. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this uh, before you do, I will tell you folks, if you get a chance, if you're in New York or in Taos, New Mexico at the end of the year, December 28th to 31st, or in New York in January, late January, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 
If you get a chance to see uh, Naomi's show, American Horror Story, I'm going to opine there are not a lot of really great one-person shows. They're a lot harder to do than people think. But I've seen Naomi do a couple of these. And this one is really fully produced, fully, fully produced and a, a great story and extremely honest. So, so extremely honest and funny and uh, thoughtful. And I, I just loved it. So tell me uh, where we are with American Horror Story. Um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, so we did a, a a run in June at the Skylight Theater in Los Angeles. Thank you again for being there. Um, and uh, so then we scored this uh, off Broadway run. Um, have to wait till January for it, but that's why we thought, oh, you know what? Let's kind of dust off the cobwebs somewhere close to home. Uh, you know how they do. You know they hit Baltimore before they go right. to Broadway. Well, we figured we'd hit Taos before we hit off Broadway. Um, Taos is where my family's from. So that's where I'll go for the holidays and figure why not? They're, uh, um, it's a nice, very kind uh, hometown crowd. Not that I need that per se, but it doesn't hurt. Why choose yeah. kindness? Like they say. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. So now I, in, in the story, you, you talk about, uh, boyfriends, you talk about uh, crazy trips to Burning Man, you talk about your career. Uh, you know, let, one thing, Naomi, that, you know, having known you for as long as I have, you touch on this briefly in the show, uh, but the word perseverance comes in into the, into, you know, the theme of perseverance comes in. You know, there was a long stretch before Pepper, Samantha Crow, or, or whatever, uh, you know, and, and you really hung, you really hung in there for a, for quite a while, and you know, it, the road rose to meet you uh, with Pepper. At, you know, I would I would point to Pepper as a big breakthrough, but right. perseverance, perseverance is a big part of your story. Absolutely, I think um, you know people mistake the word whore for let's say uh, uh, slut. <laughs> and that's not that's not what this is. Uh, right. I, not to say that that's not what I've been. Uh, that's a different show. That was Carnival Knowledge. Uh, this is a new show. This is a little older, wiser, more mature. Uh, and the whore is a hustler. But let's face it, American hustler story doesn't quite have the same ring. But it's the same idea. It's a woman who does what she's got to do to get what she wants. And sometimes it's compromising. Uh, and that's what the story is. It's it's sort of my history of hustling. And you're right. It goes way back from the odd jobs I've had to my even odder love life. Um, we, we, we go all the way back to uh, my first grade crush uh, who I... Um, well, he's the one with the racket. He was, uh, uh, he would show his belly button for 10, 10, 10 cents a pop at recess. Now, who has that kind of money? Uh, um, so I, I devised this whole, um, you know, I mean, I was, listen, I was like the scrawniest kid in class and I was, still would be for that matter. But, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't going to shake people down for, for, for cash to see Brent's belly button. So instead I, um, yeah, I, I, I crafted this whole, uh, club basically, uh, membership dues towards being my friend, of course. Um, anyway, it, the, the point is I've been kind of like hustling my whole life, you know, whether it's to see Brent's belly button or to get a job on, TV or anywhere for yeah. that matter. Um, and so that's, uh, I, I think it's an interesting, um, I think it's a, it's an interesting look into the idea of, you know, overnight success because yeah. while people may think that of me, because let's face it, Pepper kind of came out of nowhere. The fact is, you know, I've been at this, you know, you didn't know me back in, in, you know, Ms. Higgins class first grade, but, uh, that's how long, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I got my SAG card on my 15th birthday. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. you know, well, I was coming down from Northwestern to do cannibal cheerleaders on crack and Shannon order to shoot yeah. a porno with you. That's uh, where what, we know each other. 
20? Well, well you know, also, yeah, uh, it was it was almost 30 years ago. And I don't even think you were 20 years old. No, and I, I was not. in my late. Yeah. And we were doing these great shows. Chicago's known for these over the top comedies, but you were always very brave. And, uh, you know, I always prided myself on, you know, being brave as a performer. I always said, you know, if I'm watching the tonight show and the person, the person from the movie is, is the same person who's being interviewed, you should be thrown out of the actors union. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I love characters. So let's talk briefly about pepper, the, the encephalitic, uh, character, the, the pinhead character, you know, I, I said to you, I said to you years ago, uh, after this had all happened, I said, you know, this, this is worth, I think I said, this is worth like 10 roles. This is worth like 10 movies because now people are really going to see that you are a really great and committed actress, uh, mm -hmm. because of this, you know, this character will really show people she's really here to act. And um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about Pepper? And I know you you go to, you know, horror conventions and things like this now. And Pepper's very well remembered. It's a beautiful show, American Horror Story. So tell me about that character. Gosh, I love what you said about the, you know, Jay Leno thing. And if you're that same person, like, get out of the union. Um, <laughs> only because, you know, I've now... <clears throat> gotten to meet all kinds of actors, uh, many of which are my, you know, I mean, I, I fangirl for them. And then I've come to realize, oh, you're, you're that person from that show. Like, you're not even acting. And I, it's like, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit because yeah, yep. I, I'm not trying to be on a reality show. Like this yep. as is as much of Naomi as you're going to get to see, you yep. know what I mean? Like, I, I do. yes, on, um, if I ever, get to do Jay Leno, then yeah, there people will get to meet Naomi. But otherwise, I don't I'm not trying to be Naomi. I'm trying to be Pepper. I'm trying to be Samantha Crow. I'm trying to be whoever. It's it's ironic actually, given that my solo shows are so honest. They are so vulnerable. I mean that's where I really just like open my soul and and am yeah. truly myself. But that's the only place you're gonna get to see me. Yeah. Um, you know, I I'm not joining Big Brother. <laughs> yeah, and, no, and I, I, I hear you. I, I think that's such a cop out. Like, I, you know, I don't know. There's and there's actors that even I, I, we, we all love. I mean, I love Robert De Niro, but could he? I'd love to see him do something that's not like an Italian gangster grandpa. Yeah, yeah. Like, there was a time. There was a time with him. Uh, you know, look, he's an older guy now, but there was a time with him that it was like a Daniel Day Lewis thing. Like, you know, you really never knew what you were going to get. And, and I just love actors like that, you know, to really sink themselves into the role and it's internal, you know what I mean? So I, I saw some casting people uh, out and about recently and, uh, and they hadn't cast me in this part, but, and I, but I remembered um, meeting them and I, I said, ah, I'll never forget that part. The role was for a, 90 year old woman from the 1400s England with a hump in her back and like a claw hand. And I told them, I was like, when I first got the call, I was like, are, is, was this a mistake? You know, you usually film and TV, we play our age more or less, yeah. more or less. Um, and I know, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a butterface, uh, but uh, I'm kidding. Uh, no. no, it just needs to have a hot body is what it No, means. but the fact, look, the fact that they would call you for a 90-year-old woman, yeah. that, that's a, the highest compliment, Naomi, especially yeah. in that business where it's a cookie-cutter business. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the fact that they would call you, I think it has a lot to do with Pepper or Samantha Crow and what they, they see your range. Well, and it's, it's interesting. And you know, for having been in this business too, uh, you know... <laughs> Unlike, well, oftentimes we have a type, right? And so you go into a, a, a casting call and you just see a, a room full of people that look just like you. And I will say one thing that's, I think, special about me is that, you know, unlike all my blonde bombshell six foot model friends who just, you know, have just clones of themselves lined up to audition, yeah. um, 
I walk into my casting calls and there's, you know, an Asian little person, a giant black man, a, you know, there, there's yeah. all, in my case, it's usually like they don't know what they want. They just want yeah. something kind of out there. So that's cool. Like I, at least yeah. I don't have to worry about the like petite brunettes, Caucasian, you know what I mean? Like who cares? That's just surface. In that's my case, like we want something, we want an odd choice. That's earned. Okay. Mm. See, that's earned, Naomi. That's, that's perseverance, but that's, you got to make the right choices. And I, you know, I, I can tell you from personal experience that trying to drive yourself into someone else's cookie cutter is the is the easiest thing to do, and only nine. And I'm I'm going to be blunt. Ninety nine point seven percent of all actors are are doing that, and they're doing it out of necessity. But the ones who really who who really are authentic, uh, like yourself, are the smartest ones. And I've been part of the 99.7, and I, I, I have the highest respect uh, for what you've been able to do because it's not easily done. And you, ha you, have, to really, uh, you have to really believe in yourself. So le let's talk for a moment about your, your Emmy-nominated role on Control-Alt-Delete. That must have been a, a, an outstanding moment for you. I mean, that's really got to have been an amazing, amazing thing. Yeah, I mean, it was really the last thing from my mind. Uh, it was really just a, a web series, uh, which I wanted to support because uh, I, I felt like the message was important. I think, you know, you know, from having done comedy with me um, that, you know, if we can if we can entertain, if we can make people laugh and change the world, like even better. Um so uh, this was a, a kind of a workplace comedy set in an abortion clinic. Uh, and I thought, okay, I mean, it's not really my ax to grind, but yeah, I'm, you know, uh, pro-choice. So sure. Um, uh, I, uh, so I signed up for it mostly because I thought, well, this is a unique show. Like this is something we haven't actually seen before. And this might be my way in as a series reg, <laughs> uh, because I've never played a series regular before. I'm kind of a, you know, the, uh, as we know from Pepper, they use me kind of sparingly and I would just as soon be a, a little more regular on there. Um, and so, uh, this particular role, Lorna, um, apparently all the women are, are based on, you know, real life stories. Uh, but she's a, um, kind of a serial, uh, abortionado for lack of a better word. Uh, apparently this is her birth control and, um, which is ridiculous unto itself. Uh, but, uh, anyway, uh, the point is she is one of the few other than of course any doctors or nurses or receptionists that is an actual like series regular at the abortion clinic which is again just the whole concept is hilarious to me well you, um, yeah you, you, but you were you were nominated and that must have felt that must have felt great to be to be able to to jump into uh that experience yeah i mean again it was the last thing from my mind i really just wanted to help these girls um you know, if, if, if my name meant something to them, then use it. Absolutely. Let's get this story, this word out there. But yes, well, if a nomination comes of it, even better. <laughs> let me, let me, let me take you back to, we'll call it before the digital world. You know, I've often thought, by the way, I've often thought, my God, all those times when I was young and we were shooting film and it would cost so much to, to shoot anything on film and, God knows we didn't have the money to edit anything. And now we're in the digital world. You talk about a, a web series. Let's go way back in time to sort of the pre-digital world, which is where I know you from. Uh, and and you, you were an excellent theater actress, you still are. And after our time in Chicago, and then when we got out here to L.A., uh, shortly thereafter, you ended up in the Groundling Sunday Company, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me about that because that's that's a real that's like Second City. You're you're up there in a fantastic arena. What was that like? Yeah, um, it was the best of times, worst of times. Um, 
You know, I mean, it reminded me of a Northwestern in that I was surrounded by people really good at what they do. Um, uh, only in this case, they were funny. <laughs> That's what they did. Um, they, it, it, that said, it really, it was a pressure cooker and you, you know, you, you couldn't, no one could be too funny because then it outshines you. And yet you needed everybody to be pretty funny to bring everybody up. So it was, it was a very competitive yeah. place. Yeah. It, I mean, it wasn't, um, I mean, yeah, like I said, it was super inspiring to be surrounded by so many whip smart, hilarious, talented people. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it was, it was a little yucky uh, at times yeah. in that, yeah. you know, like I said, you could only be too good. Uh, don't be too good, but, but be, yeah. but be better, be, you know? It, and so there was like this push and pull and, um, I don't know. I, I really think they'll never do it, but the greatest uh, uh, reality show known to man would be a Big Brother Groundlings edition. You know, interesting. If you could really well, see it, what goes on in the it, wall. It, there's, yeah, it's interesting. There's a bit of a Darwinian struggle there, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I remember in the before I met you, back in the early 90s, I was in Improv Olympic with a long list of names who you know all the names. And they a lot of these people ended up on Saturday Night Live and, and elsewhere and winning Oscars and things like this. And, uh, but also, there were also, you know, there's another 100 people behind them who no one's ever heard of, um, mm -hmm. it, starting with me. But but the um, the funny thing was, it wasn't... It, it, well, the funny thing about that Improv Olympic environment, Second City kind of environment, is it's not exactly nurturing, you know what I mean? It's 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 very much, it's it's extremely competitive. And and at, when I was very young, it kind of kind of uh, took me aback. Well, and you think, I mean, I get it in a way. You know, uh, there's this kind of acerbic sort of acidy uh, <clears throat> uh, vibe to comedians often, where it's like, yeah. Um, it's what, what we kind of we find someone's weakness and we poke at it and make fun of it and 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 that's what co comedians often do and yet especially with improv we need each other like right. i you know yes and like i yeah. it, we're we're complimenting one each other one another right. and and especially groundlings we were you know collaborating and writing together and and creating these you know, sketches, uh, it, it's hard. Like it, it, it's, it's hard to like, feel like you, someone has your back when they're actually stabbing it. Um, yeah. you know, so I don't know, I don't want to make it out. Like it was this like total Tanya Harding. You no, know, no, just, no, 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 it's not, but, but you learn, but, you, it's about expectations, right? You, you have yeah. certain expectations and then some of it's good. And then some of it, you're like, Oh, that was weird. But it, 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 yeah. it was, it's a cool arena, no matter how you slice it. So. Absolutely. And arena is a great word for it. I mean, it really did feel like just a gladiator after every performance is like, like I'm still here, you know? <laughs> All right. A couple more things for you, Naomi, before I let you go. Uh, yeah. we, we, you were mentioning that my, uh, one of my previous guests uh, Susan Olson, you, you, you are, you know, Susan, I love Susan. Well, I, no, I love it's only because I, uh, we are mutual Facebook friends and I noticed that she said, I just did Josh Brewster's, uh, you know, podcast. And I thought he hasn't asked me, but then it's almost like, you knew it's like, I psychically sent uh -huh. you, uh, um, and, and here I am. Um, no, it's just funny. I didn't realize we had her uh, as a, a mutual friend. We of course have so many actual friends um she i only know really from the the comic-con world um she's of course yeah. people know as the um, you, cindy brady yeah um, you do a, you do a lot of comic cons and things like this it's I that's do. cool I you do. get so you get to interact with fans and are they mostly there for pepper or samantha crow or or maybe cindy brady but yes absolutely right. um well here i'll tell you real quick how i know Cin um Susan, uh, I was at O'Hare, actually, our 
airport in Chicago. Uh, and I'd flown in for a con and the, the driver said, Oh, you, you, you here with Linda, you know, Cindy Brady. And I was like, uh, I don't know. I'm here with myself, but shh, maybe that's entirely possible. And he was like, Oh, you know, do you mind like going out and looking for? And of course I was like, well, that's kind of your job, but sure. You know, I'm a team player. Yes. And so I, um, I got out and I, I remember texting my girlfriend who I was supposed to have dinner with later that night in Chicago. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm a little late. I'm literally wandering around O'Hare looking for Cindy Brady. <laughs> it was one of those things where I literally like, all I knew is like this little girl from the sixties with like ringlets. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, so I, I had to yeah. Google her. Cause I was like, I have no idea what this woman looks like. Anyway, I did find her, which is, um, incredible but um anyway that's my my cindy brady well story. no she, yeah. you know what and she time. has an interesting you know when you're when you're cindy brady at mm. that age okay at that age now now you're going to carry this the rest of your life yeah. and i asked her i asked susan about that i said uh and, you know i said what and i said what uh, how do you handle this and she says you you can either you can either you can either embrace it or you can spend your life running from it. Mm. So there you go. And so she's she's got a very healthy attitude. She teaches acting to kids and stuff. So she's but she's cool. I love her. So let let's uh, let's finish with this. Let's double back to American Horror Story. Sure, you, folks, you got to go see this if you're anywhere near New York or you're anywhere near Taos. This is a really really well produced and well directed by Richard Israel. By the way, it's written written and performed by Naomi. Uh, American Horror Story. So, Naomi, tell me just a little bit about uh, you must have gotten a blessing from Ryan Murphy and crew on American Horror Story because you're calling it American Horror Story. And, you know, it's um, you must have gotten their blessing. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um I mean, it's really a love letter to to them, to to them and and the, and the fandom. Um obviously the show doesn't have to be called that. Like there's, I could have called it other, I, I could have called it respect the hustle, for example. Um, and at one time my producers were trying to convince me to do that. And I thought, no, um, no. Uh, but uh, obviously I was really glad when I did get their blessing. Um, uh, I mean, they were the first invitation I sent. Um but, you know, like I said, the show isn't dependent upon that. I do kind of lean in um, because the, the framework uh, of the show, for example, I use um, title cards in the same font as American yeah. Horror Story. I use um, some sound effects, which are reminiscent. Um, obviously, I tell all kinds of, um, you know, unique to pepper stories uh so if you're looking for that kind of bts you know behind the scenes yeah. inside look you're gonna get it you know you're i, I tell the story <clears throat> pre-pepper post-pepper as pepper um but you know had i not gone gotten, gotten the blessing meh, i could have st still done the show it would have been a i little love different. the title i love the title i love 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 the title <laughs> I'm sure there's it's, porno by that name. I'm sure of it. I I'm not saying I've watched. And them. I've only and I've only acted in like nine of them. So <laughs> you know. So but nobody remembers me. Now I'm going to say this. This show. Uh, I, I'm guarantee, folks. You got my guarantee. All right. This is funny and it's really really honest. And and uh, you know when you when you get this level of honesty in a show, uh, that's rare. It, it, and it's there's nothing. There's nothing funnier than the truth. And 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 Naomi is, is laying it all out there and she's a great performer. And uh she even throws in a couple of impressions and characters along the way. And you will not be disappointed. Uh, you will love it. And then uh Naomi, I cannot thank you enough for doing me the honor of joining me today. It is always great to see you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I love that you say that about honesty because you know, one thing a lot of people everyone asks is was that really all true? And yes, <laughs> I, I actually say, and, and it's literally like the second or third line of the show is uh, every word of this horror story is true. Uh, it is every word of it, except there's one lie 
and I, and it's only recently a lie. Uh, the, the line is, I don't go to glory holes, but I actually accidentally went to one. It's so the actually, accident, wait a minute. This is the sequel, the accidental glory hole. You, that's the next show. I'm, I'm directing, I'm directing that one. That's the next show. I just love that that's the one lie. When people are like, is it all true? I'm like, no, the, I don't go to, it's, I don't go to glory holes often. Anyway, no, it, thank you. Thank you for There everything. she is, Naomi Grossman, uh, the great Naomi Grossman. And thank you again, Naomi. Mwah! I appreciate you. <laughs>